Everyone understands FPS, how many frames are displayed in a second and the more the better. But like Scott Watson and Steve from Gamers Nexus explained in a video that I'll link below, FPS isn't a linear scale, so while the more the better is definitely right, the more you get, the less better it all gets. This video though is really just explaining what frame times are and giving them a bit of a definition that everyone can understand. If at the end of this video you're interested in finding out more, then feel free to let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to do my best to make a, an easy to understand video for a bit more detail about how all of this works. Even if I suppose that sort of video is kind of meant to be reserved for people like Computerfile, but we'll go for it anyway. So what are frame times? Well, frame times are a unit of measurement, normally measured in milliseconds, which effectively just does what it says on the tin, tells you between one frame being rendered and the next how long that took. Your monitor works as all motion pictures do, displaying a series of still images that in a high enough frame rate or enough times per second that changes, it looks like a motion picture as the, the name suggests. Uh, most monitors do that at 60 times a second or 60 hertz, which means that the time between each frame being displayed on your screen is 16.7 milliseconds. That 16.7 milliseconds may not be how long your actual PC is taking to render that frame, but but that's a topic for a different video. Uh, just let's pretend for the sake of this one that each frame is taking exactly 16.7 milliseconds to render. Uh, that is essentially just the, the PC renders one frame and pushes it to the display. The, the very millisecond or microsecond that that frame is done, the timer starts and the PC gets to rendering the next one. As soon as that frame is done and, and ready to be pushed to the display, the timer stops and then you've got a frame time result for the that frame. Really, frame times are just a, a stopwatch for how quickly your PC or console can render a frame, and the quicker it can do it, the more smooth and enjoyable your experience will be. The problem comes when frames take too long to render. Now there's two main ways that that can happen. The first one is just when all of the frames take uh, too long to render, and that means that you get an overall low FPS value, and therefore you get a bit of a choppy experience, and uh, generally that's just because your PC or console can't really handle the game it's trying to play. But the more hidden problem there is when it's only one or two frames that take too long to render. In this case, you'll likely see that your FPS results are reporting as nice and high, you know, your normal FPS results for that game but your experience it will feel like it's a much lower FPS and that's because of what's called stuttering. Now because of that stuttering you can end up with graphs like this one to show your frame times where you can see that the average frame time is pretty low. Uh, if you were to convert it to FPS you're looking at about 120 FPS overall but you're seeing that there's multiple spikes basically every second where one frame or two frames are taking upwards of like 20 to 30 milliseconds to render which is significantly slower than the eight or so milliseconds that is generally taken to render the rest of the frames. That means that your overall visual experience feels like you're playing at like 15 FPS rather than the 120 that you're seeing in your FPS counter. Now stuttering generally doesn't show up in FPS results because FPS is frames per second, it's an average. That gets masked, all the, all the stuttering gets masked under all of the other frames that are you know, rendering in normal time. And that's the, the big problem with using FPS over frame times. You can get results like Steve from Gamers Next has talked about, where certain CPUs or graphics cards can have really great on paper, you know, on a chart benchmark results, but the actual experience of playing them is absolutely awful and you would not recommend that to anyone. With that said though, I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. If you wanna know more about why FPS is a problem for benchmarking, then feel free to check out Steve from Gamers Nexus video with Scott Watson, where they go into a bit more detail about that. And if you wanna know more about how the, the graphics pipeline works and how graphics cards actually go about rendering each frame on your screen, then let me know in the comments down below I'm trying to get, as I said, a bit of an easy to understand video out on that. So um, if you're interested, let me know in the comments down below. With that said though, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up on the channel. If you're interested, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for those videos. There's plenty of other videos over there you can check out. And if you want to support this channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, then check out the links in the description down below. There's uh, hoodie links if you want to pick up, you know, merch like this. Um, or you can check out Private Internet Access with a great and cheap VPN, Humble bundle for some cheap games uh, and a load of other stuff including Amazon and Overclock and Shakira affiliate links. 
Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.